We've got new leaks about the RTX 4000 series, and we can go back over what we think we know, at least, about release dates, and then we'll compare that to, how about current GPUs? The prices are still coming down. So I know the question on a lot of people's minds is, should they buy now while prices are down, or should you go ahead and wait for the next gen? Well, first, Let's take a look at what is our new info here. So this is our favorite uh, leaker, Copite 7 Kimi, Copite 7 Kimi. Uh, I, I don't know, guys, you guys know I can't pronounce his name, but what does he have to say? Well, overall, a lot of this is a rehash of stuff he's said before, which at least confirms he's still confident on a lot of the details. And this is really just adding in some new information regarding the clock speeds he's expecting on the RTX 4090. Now, this is all in this post, but there's some other details he's leaked before that aren't in this post, and this is not formatted super well. So I'm gonna use this WCCF tech article up here. A uh, link to all my sources will be in the description of the video uh, for us to dive in here a little bit. So we are expecting the RTX 4090 to be the first 4000 series launched. All of the various usual leakers seem to be agreeing on this, and the time frame is most likely going to be October. We did see a few people suggest September, but um, more of the leaks and rumors seem to be pointing at October as the release date for the RTX 4090. Now this would be using the full AD102-300 chip, uh, but the, uh, the actual full die could be uh, withheld for a TI variant, so keep that in mind. Now the leaks we're seeing here for the RTX 4090 or that it's gonna use 128 SMs, but that the 4090 Ti could be withholding 144 SMs. And this could get us 16,384 CUDA cores. Now this is gonna have a 96 megabyte L2 cache. Now that's not in the latest leak, but that's something that, that we've seen leaked before and this would get a total of 384 ROPs. Now, these numbers are absolutely huge, and one of the big things that we saw changed uh, in this current leak isn't any of those numbers, it's the clock speeds. So previously, NVIDIA on their 3000 series was using Samsung's eight nanometer tech, but they're gonna be moving to the TSMC four nanometer process node, or 4N node, whether that's really nanometers or not, we could argue over. But anyway, they're moving over to the TSMC 4N node, and it seems like they're going to be able to get um, a huge clock speed boost compared to the previous generation. So we're seeing the base clock as a 60% boost compared to the 3090. Uh, with the 4090 having a 2235 megahertz boost, whereas the 30, uh, sorry, the 4090 uh, has the 2235 and the 3090 only had a 1395 megahertz boost. So that's a huge base clock boost. Now the boost clocks are uh, boosting by about 49%, going up to 2520 from the 3090's 1695. And there's a rumored max clock speed getting close to 2800 megahertz for the 4090, whereas the RTX 3090 would usually max out around 2100. So we're seeing that not only are we going to have a bunch more CUDA cores, but these are gonna be clocked much higher. And so overall, this should lead to some massive performance. Now, uh, when, when some of the first 4000 series rumors were coming out, we were seeing a 100 teraflop GPU rumor. And if you actually run these clock speeds through these specs, uh, we would be expecting over 90 teraflops. So we are near that 100 teraflops original rumor. So this all does seem to be lining up with the leaks we've been seeing all along. Now that's absolutely massive, but uh, and, and would suggest almost doubling the performance of an RTX 3090. However, do keep in mind that, that floating point operations do not just scale directly to in-game performance meaning that while we might see uh, about doubling of the theoretical performance available here, that doesn't necessarily mean we'll see a exactly 2x increase in gaming performance. It wouldn't surprise me if it was uh, lower than that. 
Now, the power draw rumors that we've seen <laughs> uh, for the 4090 are absolutely insane. Um, so this could be uh, 500 watts or more, even up to 600 watts if it's powered by a 16-pin a, a PCIe Gen 5 power connector type that would supply up to 600 watts of power. And um, we are still expecting to see 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory on these things clocked at 21 gigabits per second and a 384-bit bus. So this thing is an absolute monster. Now here's the thing though, if you're on this like, should I buy now or should I wait? Well, remember the price for this, the, the 90 class GPU is probably going to be absolutely insane. So I'll get to more of my thoughts on should you buy now or wait once we've wrapped up more of the, uh, the spec rumors. So the 4080, according to these rumors, didn't really get updated. Um, the, the new information we got today was really those clock speeds for the 90 class GPU. But I would assume that it would make sense to also expect similar, not identical, but similar clock speed increases down the line by moving to this new process node and architecture. So um, it looks like for, from the 4080, we're actually expecting it to be based on the AD 103 GPU, not the AD 102 GPU that we saw in the 4090. And then this would be all the way down to 10,240 cores, which would be 80 SMs, uh, enabled out of an uh, 84 uh, SM units available here. So again, that's maybe leaving some room for a 4080 Ti or something like that. And again, this will come packed with 64 megabytes of L2 cache. Now notice that these cache values are a lot higher than what we saw on the 3000 series. And that could help with what, it, what we're expecting to see on the 4070 um, especially uh, a kind of cut down memory bus increases. So this does seem like NVIDIA might be going with something like what AMD did with their Infinity Cache, where they can have a, a lower bit bus, but then still actually have um, pretty good performance by having an expanded cache. So the RTX 4080, we're expecting to see a 16 gigabyte of GDDR6X, and I, I love to see that because we hated the 3080 at only 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X. So it's nice to see um, the at least rumors. Again, I gotta just keep mentioning, this is all just rumored, but the rumors point to 16 gigabytes, which is a, a massive uh, improvement over what we saw last generation. And then um, the overall specs uh, should get it up to 672 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. And the board power on this could be 420 watts, which is a big jump even from the 3080. So you've got to worry about whether your power supply can handle this, uh, which is a little bit, uh, you know, unfortunate. Uh, if any of the rumors turn out to be wrong, I would hope it would be the power consumption, but... I don't know guys, these have been pretty consistent rumors about high power consumption. Now the RTX 4070, I think the um, biggest disappointment that people uh, are, are seeing on this one is that um, it's, uh, how, how should we put this? It, it's only a few more cores than the RTX 3070 Ti, which had 6,144 cores. Um, the, so, so this is going to be, 7,168 cores, so that's not that great. Um, we're expecting the large cache, which will help because the memory uh, bit bus is only 160 bits, which is not a lot. And this could be a total board power of, of 300 watts. And we've also seen rumors that the pricing of this card would not be lower than the RTX 3070 or 3070 Ti. Now, that matters a lot here, which one of those we go with, because this is $500 and this is $600. So, oh man, if we saw a $600 4070 with only 10 gigabytes, now 10 gigabytes is better than eight, like we saw on the previous generation. Uh, but I think a lot of people were hoping to see at least 12 here. Now we have even fewer details about anything below this, but if you wanna see the overall, um, uh, you know, uh, specs kind of thrown together here in, in a chart by WCCF Tech, you get this idea here. Now, when do we expect to see these cards and should you wait for them? 
Well, that's the thing. So the rumors point to the 4090 coming in October. Again, rumor, but that's the best we've got. And to me, this makes sense because it is about a two year release cadence uh, between generations of cards. And while we had seen some rumors of September, all signs point to there being a, a lot of stock on the RTX 3000 series cards right now needing to sell through. So I think delaying the launch even by a month could help, uh, you know, board partners not be furious with Nvidia and all of that, <laughs> um, wanting to sell through their stock uh, before these new cards launch. And then all signs point to um, it being kind of a staggered one card per month um, uh, throughout the rest of the year. So we'd not see the 4080 until November and the 4070 coming in December. And then we've seen some rumors that the 4060, which we don't have a lot of information about, uh, could be waiting even for a January unveil. And then who knows if it even launches in January, it might just be revealed at CES. So, so that's where we get into does it make any sense to wait for these things? Also, we don't have rumored pricing. So any pricing I talk about here is gonna be my own personal speculation and I wanna be clear about that. But let's pop over to this page for a second. So what is this page? I I'm grabbing this from, um, ah, uh, from videocards.com. And this is actually a summary of information that we got in a recent Tom's Hardware article. And the, uh, I've reported on this data before, but I, I wanna uh, bring this up because it's current GPU pricing where we can first of all see the MSRPs of the 3000 series, as well as we can see what they're actually currently selling for at retail new right now, almost two years after that generation came out. Um, and then we can also see the current eBay prices, okay? So we can see a whole bunch of information about what our cards actually selling for right now, and as well as looking at their MSRPs. So here's the thing. If we're, if we're thinking about these pricing, the RTX 4090, I would expect its MSRP to be more than, uh, more than $1,500, because the RTX 3090 had a $1,500 MSRP, and there are still models selling for around that, although on eBay at least, they are down closer to the $1,000 price point. But again, this is the Halo product that makes more sense for people to buy initially at their launch. Now, uh, Nvidia tried to have the 3090 Ti MSRP at $2,000 but we're seeing that already, even very close after its launch, its actual retail prices are, are a lot lower than that $2,000 mark, although the eBay prices are holding above 1,000. But that's because the people buying at this high end, now if you think again, are you gonna wanna buy now? A lot of people don't wanna buy at the high end right now because we know that these 4,000 series cards are coming at the end of the year and will absolutely destroy the performance but, but I do think that, M that NVIDIA has already showed what kinds of MSRPs they're looking at here. So yes, we're probably gonna get the next gen card 4090 come out in October, but it's probably gonna MSRP somewhere between 1500 and $2,000. And then initially it's going to get scalped because regardless of whether the crypto market recovers, which at this point I don't expect it to, at least not, not fully to get to the disastrous 3000 series card prices that extended for so long. Um, but I would expect between 1500 to $2,000 for the 4090, and I would expect it to be scalped for at least the first month or two. That's pretty common on any GPU launch, and especially if they're leading with the high end. So the only way to get this amount of performance, and this will be the new highest level of graphics card performance ever, will be to get that card. So it absolutely will have demand from gamers at the high end, regardless of crypto pricing. And so I think uh, you'll be lucky to get one in the first, uh, like in 2022, uh, for probably less than $2,000. That, that, that's just my speculation, but I think that's what you'll be paying. Now, when the um, 4080 comes out, Given that I would expect this, again, to come out in November, but then also to be more powerful than a 3090, 
which are currently selling at around the, the $1,000 mark used and more than that new. I guess what I'm getting at here is I would not expect a whole bunch of pricing pressure on these cards. I think that you could expect a high MSRP. So let's talk about what could we see from the MSRP. So the RTX 3080 MSRP was $700. And we've already seen that despite the fact that the crypto market has crashed, we've already, we still see the new prices on RTX 3080s at around $800, given that they're old and the crypto market has crashed and even their used prices are maintaining around the $700 mark. So what I expect Nvidia has learned here is that they can price this card, the, the 80 class cards higher than $700. And they noticed that with the 3080 Ti and they, they set that MSRP at $1,200 when that wasn't even much of a performance boost. And then the uh, 3080 Ti's are actually still selling new for around $1,000 and their eBay prices are still over $900, which means that I would expect Nvidia to price the RTX 4080, plus there's been inflation and they can just claim inflation and all that, but regardless of whether that's real, really why they're raising the price, I would expect it to be at least an $800 MSRP for the 4080, and I would not be surprised to see a $900 or even $1,000 MSRP because they see that people will pay that, and because it's gonna be beating, I think, any current GPU's performance. So um, basically, what does that push us to? So now we're going through November, and even if you get one at MSRP, these could still be eight or nine hundred dollars, if not more. And again, I would expect scalping to be an issue for at least the first couple of months. So that could be pushing them over the thousand dollar mark and possibly well over the thousand dollar mark. So what I'm getting at again is, do you want to wait for that? That's a long time and still a lot of money. But if you're interested in, if you're the kind of person who was thinking about buying a 3090 Ti, I would tell you maybe wait. And if you don't have a GPU right now, maybe grabbing something 3080 or below right now as a holdover with still fantastic performance before jumping into the new Halo product kind of makes sense. Now the 4070 uh, coming out in December, so what do we think that'll be priced at? Well, we just saw the rumors on this article pointing at definitely not being lower than a 3070 or 3070 Ti. I would not be surprised to see a 600, oh, they'll call it 599, you know, but to, to see that MSRP on the 4070. Again, I hope I'm wrong, but I would not be surprised to see that because N NVIDIA has already tipped their hat with the 3070 Ti that they want to be charging more. So if we saw the, uh, the 4070 coming in around $600 and not until December, that's a long time to wait and it's still just a 10 gigabyte card. And that, that 70 class card may or may not actually be able to you know, be significantly better than some of the current top end. So I guess what I'm getting at here is if the card that you're kind of waiting for is the 4070, I'm almost wondering if it would just make sense to buy a 3080 right now, because I do think that the 3070 might beat a 3080, but I doubt it would beat it by that much. And if that's not launching until December, and again, could be scalped, could have availability issues going on, right? That's around Christmas time. It's probably gonna be hard to buy one of those at launch time. So you'd be probably pushing out into the next year if you wanted to get one at its MSRP, which like I said, I wouldn't be surprised to see it around $600. So is it worth it to just spend around seven or eight hundred dollars on a 3080 right now? Get similar, probably performance. We don't know for sure. <laughs> um, you know, 3070, uh, 4070 probably will be to 3080. But again, by how much? Um, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I, I think that it, that's where it starts to kind of make sense. Now, if you're waiting for a 4060 or below, if these aren't even announced until CES January, and who knows when the availability comes in. This really starts to be how long do you want to wait to, to have a new GPU? If you have a GPU you're pretty happy with right now, you just kind of are itching to get something better, well, fine, you, you could go ahead and wait for that. 
But, uh, you know, I, I think even that 4060, I wouldn't be surprised to see it priced around $400, have availability issues at first. And so, like, I don't think there's going to be a lot of downward pricing pressure. So if, if you're waiting on, like, a, a, a 4050 or something like that, I think you're going to be waiting a long time. And it's going to take a while before we see um, pricing pressure really come down here. Now, you might be able to grab some used cards pretty cheap in the near future. As we get closer to these release dates, people might start unloading their, you know, 3080s and 3090s uh, in preparation to buy a 4080 or 4090 before they launch. And so that's where you might start to see some real, real eBay pricing pressure on these uh, coming up. So I do expect the prices on current cards to continue to fall. But like I said, you're getting a lot of performance from a 3080 right now. And I think it'll be a while before we see significant uh, pricing pressure on that. So to me, it still could make sense to buy at this point or below if you get a reasonable price on it. But it really depends on, on how, much, how much value do you put on having something now, um, you know, having something for the next several months versus waiting. And that probably depends a lot on how happy you are with your current graphics card. And if you don't even have a gaming PC, you're just wanting to, to buy one, right? And you want one to play with over the summer, maybe you're a student, you get some summertime off. Don't feel bad if you wanna go ahead and get something now. And also, if you're targeting 1440p gaming, uh, the 3080 really delivers very good 1440p performance. And that's the last thought I'll leave you guys with. When the new cards come out, it does not make the current cards perform worse, okay? If you're buying monster 1440p performance from your 3080 right now, it's not going to get worse when these new cards launch. It just means you, it, it might p mean you could have got the same performance for less money or could have got you know more performance for the same money, but the 3080 will still be a very good 1440p card uh, when these new ones come out. Now, I will say that if you're if you're super into 4K gaming, I have a 3080 12 gigabyte, and it does well at 4K, but I would certainly like to have a higher refresh rate experience, and trying to ray trace at 4K is uh, pretty much pointless. You have to use DLSS pretty, pretty, uh, too, too much, right? Like performance mode doesn't look great to me. Um, anyway, so if you're really looking for high-end 4K performance, that's where I think, you know, waiting on some of these might be the way to go. But if, yeah, so anyway, those, those are my thoughts. In the end, it's going to be up to you. Uh, and I've given you all the information, current pricing, and a lot of my speculation on it. So hopefully this was useful, and I hope you have an excellent day.